One of the first to jump is to Dad Magic of Sydney. Marble Horse dropping back along the inside. Might and Power is prominent coming across from the outside. Day Rabay, Sweet Delight up in the leading group, being followed closely a bit further back by Iron Horse and our Sumo. And Magnet Bay on the outside of Markham as they pass the Judge Cattle. And opening back along the inside of Bonsai Pipeliner. Ebony Grove further back in the field and they were followed closely by Peep on the Sly. Doremus is third, last two lengths further back as Sky Bow and last of all Count Shiver sweeping onto the side. And the leader here, Might and Power, a half length to Dara Bay, a length and a half further back. Sweet Delight on the outside of Magic of Sydney. Two lengths further back in the field. Then came Always Aloof, being followed closely by Marble Horse on the rails. Uh, three off the rail, they're going around the Mazau Sumo, followed by Iron Horse. A length further back is Esther Dad. Over on the inside, Catalan opening. A length and a half further back, Magnet Bay being followed by Markham and Bonsai Pipeline together. They're followed by Peep on the Sly as over on the inside of Ebony Grove. Doremus is well back in the field. Next to last is Count Shivers and Sky Bowers last of all as they race up the hill. Might and Power in charge. Leading about a length and a half. Day Rabay is second. Magic of Sydney on the inside is third. They're followed closely then by Iron Horse and back in behind them. Sweet Delight. Marble Halls on the rails. A length and a half further away came Always Aloof followed by Catalan opening. Over on the outside now Sumo is to is in behind them. Magnet Bay. They're followed by Bonsai Pipeline, a length further back as Markham, followed closely by Ebony Grove. A fair way back in the field, Doremus on the outside of Peep on the Sly, followed by Sky Bow. And Count Shivers is last of all. They're on the railway side, Might and Power still the leader. About a length in advance of Day Rabay, followed by Iron Horse and Magic of Sydney, Sweet Delight. There goes Always Aloof around the outside of the stable, mate. Marble Halls on the rails, followed by Easter Dad. Catlin opening is making ground, followed by our Sumo, a length and a half further back, Magnet Bay. Bonsai Pipeline followed by Ebony Grove going forward, followed by Markham. Sky Bow a long way back in the field. Count Shivers and Peep on the Sly as last of all. This leader, Might and Power, making a merry bid for victory, coming up towards the home turn. Got away by a length and a half. All was a loop around the outside. Iron Horses in the picture. Day Rabay followed by Magic of Sydney. Marble Horse blocked away on the inside as they straighten up. Might and Power is the leader. He's well clear. Might and Power got away three or four lengths in advance of Always a Loop and Ebony Grove coming down the outside. Then Iron Horse and Marble Horse from a long way back, but Might and Power well clear. 150 metres left to go. He's six lengths ahead. Marble Horse along the inside. Is to dead in the clear. Doremus down the outside finishing off strongly, but Might and Power has bolted in with the Caulfield Cup. He wins by eight lengths. Doremus second. Good go for third. Cadillac opening will mark him. They're followed by Easter Dad. Further back, Marble Halls, followed by Ebony Grove, and back in behind the Magnet Bay and Sweet Delight. Peep on the sly, always aloof, Count Shivers. Well back in the field, Sky Bow, Iron Horse, our Sumo, Day Rabay, Magic of Sydney, and Bonsai Pipeline has run last. Well, a record time, a record winning margin, and according to most good judges, the most authoritative win in the Caulfield Cup since the mighty Tullock way back in the mid-50s, Simon O'Donnell because I, I would have been riding him in the cup and he ran well, he just didn't run it out the last bit um, but he still will, will run in the Melbourne Cup but it was just awesome um, you just don't get wins like that I don't know whether he'll be able to back it up next week in a Cox Plate because if he does run because it was just unbelievable This terrific tracking shot as the field neared the turn and it was about the 600 metres where Jimmy Cassidy said I'm off as a matter of fact I was talking to Jim earlier today and he said that he actually turned around and yelled out to a few jockeys within earshot, including Glenn Boss on Sweet Delight. He said, I'll see you later, boys. And he wasn't kidding. Yeah, well, he must have had a very strong voice to do it because uh, they weren't that close for that long, particularly in the last 400 metres. Look, the, the great run there for Doremus. And uh, I suppose I'm trying to put the hand up of some of the Victorian horses because we had a deplorable day yesterday. And uh, I say the war has started between Victoria and New South Wales and South Australia. Stuck their bib in as well and won a couple yesterday. And yeah. Melbourne had the solitary win. But um, there's been a lot of build-up between New South Wales and Victorian horses at the moment. New South Wales are kicking our brains in. Did you yeah. only have one winner yesterday, yeah, Victoria? Just, uh, yeah, we, we slotted in the first. South Australia took our AFL. There was no Sydney horses in the first or Adelaide <laughs> horses. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. I hear, I hear. You know that winner's day, John. 
That win was like Hariba's down the straight that day when he ran, you know, world record time and he was just yeah. amazing. And that was very similar. And you only get mm. this type of win once every four or five years. Mm. You just don't yeah. see it much in the modern era as, you know, horses just doing what Kingston Town used to do and, and we saw it yesterday. That's reminiscent of a great athlete or a great boxer reaching his absolute zenith on a particular day. But can he do it next week in a Cox play if yeah. he does run? I don't think they'll even try. No, true. Went over the line on Might and Power in the Caulfield Cup. Usually we'll see a jockey give one wave of the whip. I reckon Jimmy Cassidy gave 10 or 12. It was obviously just an enormous thrill. And was that a sign that Jimmy Cassidy's back for big race riding? Yeah, well, I think I've really proved that this week to, to everybody because I won the Metrop for Jack and it was Group 1. And then I come down and won on Falante, the Lumber Stakes, it was Group 1. And, you know, people think things can be a flash in the pan, but uh, I've got another story for them, mate. I'm back and I'm coming back bigger than ever. Well, you've got seven days even to come back bigger than ever from the Saturday prior because for eight Cox Plate, that must excite you now. Yeah, well, I was really pumped up for this carnival. I, I was, I talked to you Ladies here 12 months ago at Flemington, Flemington I seen you, and I was doing a little bit of work for the media there, and uh, it was hard seeing everyone else doing their job as, as good as, you know, the other jockeys do it. Good to see Shane winning and Darren and, and all the boys, but when you're not there and you can't do it yourself, that really hurt me. And, uh, it, it really got me super focused for this carnival and knowing that Jack had Falante, Might and Power, Yippie to come to this carnival and, and be competitive, I knew their job was done and it's just up to me to finish it off. Can you find another head out of Falante in the Cox Plate this year? Yeah, look, he, he's really improved this week. You wouldn't think he could improve much, but uh, he's really improved since he's won the stakes win. And, you know, it's going to be a good race, him and Encounter, but I respect all the other runners that are running too. They, they've probably improved a bit too, but uh, it's going to be a great race. Well, they say winners are grinners and uh, losers can please themselves, as Simon Marshall found out after the Cup when he spoke with riders of the Beaton Brigade, commencing with Danny Nicolick. Danny, always elusive. You seem to have every chance in the race. Was there any hard luck stories? No, I had a good run, Simon, at the whole way. I posited up fifth, sixth. Uh, Travelled beautiful, didn't even touch a bit. Uh, that horse put four or five on me within two strides. He, uh, uh, the pace was just nice early. It, it obviously suited your horse. No excuses? No, I couldn't make any excuses, Simon. Just the, uh, on the day, it wasn't good enough. Chris, with all fairness to him, though, I didn't have the best of runs. I got stuck three deep, but... Um, you know, it probably wasn't as good a run as the Epsom. Yeah, he got pulling early a little bit, but that was just how slow they were going. And then when they quick and he quick and lovely, and I was able to get him out. And when I got him out, he just he got home nicely. It was obviously a good guide for a Melbourne Cup, you're saying? Yeah, that's right. He's got two more runs and then hit the Melbourne Cup. So I think it'll be nice and tight and fit for the Melbourne Cup. Fantastic, son. Absolutely fantastic, mate. Couldn't be happier. What a great horse. Rode him very cold, though, mate. Uh, but, you know, I mean, when I say rode him cold, I mean, you can't change his horse's pattern. He's a seven-year-old and uh, he loves that. But it just goes to, to show, he's, I'm not, not telling you anything here, um, his only good run this time in on paper or on videos was uh, first up over 1,400, flew home run third. Mm -hmm. The other weight for age races, walk, trot and canter. Can't do it. Put him in a handicap, though. Big field speed. What about Melbourne Cup Day? Won't want to rain, buddy. They'll be in awful trouble if it rains. They're in serious trouble now, but if it rains, they're in big trouble. <laughs> Hard to keep that man down, I can assure you. And Might and Power kept the Friedman camp down yesterday in the Caulfield Cup. Four runners didn't win the race and were probably a little disappointed in all their runners other than Doremus, and we caught up with Lee Friedman after the race. Lee, looking back at the Caulfield Cup, your four runners, what did you think? A great run, obviously, Doremus. Yeah, no, we were ecstatic with his run. It was, it was two races. I mean, the winner was in a class of his own, and I thought Doremus did best of all the rest, and I, th I think those horses would have a tough time, you know, beating him home at Flemington, so I'm very happy to go on to the Melbourne Cup with him. Ebony, uh, not Ebony Grove, always aloof in Marble Halls? Yeah, Marble Halls may not have stayed it out in a pace that hard, you know, uh, so I think I'll, I'll run him in the McKinnon and I'll make a decision about the Melbourne Cup after that. Always aloof. Just didn't seem to race at his best today. He was... He was there till the half mile and he just raced flat after that. So I'll, I've got a couple of weeks now to work on I mean, it. I think he's still very competitive in the Melbourne Cup. Good today. Always aloof and Doremus, jointly 7-1. to one. Ebony Grove at 8-1 to one. didn't lose too many admirers. No, probably shouldn't lose too many admirers, but um, who would have thought that Might and Power would come into 3-1 to one Melbourne Cup favourite after that? I mean, so he should, but you wouldn't have thought it 24 hours ago. OK, let's go to break with more colour from Caulfield Cup Day.
100 metre mark, Carlos Dia. A battle length, the second coming, followed by Caretaker, just beat it, getting a nice run through on the inside, followed by Suavity. Then Dan Asuri and Brave Prince is in behind them, being followed by Prince Standana. On the inside, the hind is third last, followed by Ty the Nodded. Spying has got back to last as they come up past the 600 metre marker. Carlos Dare being pressured for the lead at this point of the race now by second coming. Third is Caretaker, Suavity's on the outside of Dan Asuri, just beat it on the rails. Behind them, Brave Prince as they round the home turn, foot of the outside, Ty the Nodded starting to come into the picture from the fair way back. Spying is very deep followed by the hind and last of all Prince Dan Dunn but Carlos Stair shot clear at the top of the straight 250 to go he's well and clear Carlos Stair the grey he's two lengths to Dennis Urya running on pretty well second coming behind them a long gap to spine down the outside Brave Prince is now in the clear tie the knot is running on well Carlos Stair is being tackled by Dennis Urya Brave Prince in the centre Brave Prince is coming at them Brave Prince on the outside they hit the line Brave Prince Brave Prince has won it from Dennis Urya but go for third tie the knot Carlos Stair spying in the photo ahead of the hind and, and again, that marvellous tracking camera shot shows the enforcer, Mick Dittman, at his absolute best as he guides this little grey horse to a terrific win in the Norman Robinson. Turn. Round the turn she comes, 350 out by three or four lengths to Regal Crown. El Mazoon sneaking up on the inside, is running on further back in the field then. Coming down the outside, Innocent Affair. And there followed by Bel Bolotto, who's also running on well. And Bionic Best coming from a long way back, is putting herself in the picture. Amber well back in the field, not on Friday, prefer an angel the leader. Bionic Best and Will Fly coming through in the centre with a very strong run. Will Fly, Will Fly hits the front, just one. Will Fly from Bionic Best, prefer an angel third. Close up form is El Mazoon, and they were followed by Innocent Affair. As they're making the home turn, they straighten up. The leaders went very wide. Spartacus tackled by Beta Screed. Accomplice down on the inside is running on well, and they're followed by staging. And back behind them, Can Grande. Mahogany starting to wind up down the outside. Red Hope is last of all. 150 metres left to go. Spartacus is being tackled by Mahogany. is flashing down the outside. It's Mahogany. Mahogany hit the front 100 to go and has careered away. A big winner, Mahogany. Mahogany wins by a length and a half to Spartacus and Beta Screed. Yeah, Just he's a marvel, Simon. I mean, it gave me a great thrill to see him in the churn side on Wednesday. Uh, you know, a horse, the longevity with which he's raced and, you know, still beating the best young sprinters. He's a marvellous horse. So, looking forward to running him in the uh, middle of the A thousand metres, he's probably giving them four lengths at the 400 metre mark and then just kick their brains in. You don't often see it in a sprint race of that quality. Well, I think he's had five runs at a thousand metres now for four wins. Uh, I think once he was beaten, there were excuses. So, he's probably the best thousand metre horse I've ever had. And he's won two derbies. He fair to him defies <laughs> logic, Mahogany. Absolute he's champion. Yeah, Amazing. He, he travelled in that race on Wednesday. He was just going to win from the time they jumped. He just put his head on his chest and just waited and waited. And, and that sprint over the last 400, as I just mentioned to Lee, yeah. it, it was awesome. Like, you just don't... A thousand metre race. Their last... Their no, section was the last 400. You just don't see a horse make up no. four or five lengths. But Simon, he did. Simon, people outside of racing mustn't, mightn't realise, but that win was as good as might and powers in the Caulfield Cup. Relatively, yeah. yeah. It's just that he's a sprinter and he can't get away by mm. seven lengths. Two years ago, he almost beat Octagonal in the Cox Plate. He hadn't raced for six weeks leading into that Cox Plate. They found the key to him. May yeah. I say, he's a Victorian horse. He is a Victorian horse. We won <laughs> something. <laughs> Thank goodness. Michael Iskander has been kind enough to furnish two markets. Now, one is without might and power in the field. And that one has Falante at 9 to 4, Encounter 3s, Alpha 5, Juggler 6, and Tanpur Lane at 8 to 1. And with Might and Power in the field, well, he's favourite at 5 to 2, just ahead of Falante, Encounter 9 to 2, and Alpha at 7 to 1. Grass Lass, and they're followed then by Rain Dancing on the inside of Rose Bird and Rare Bits as last. Funster led into the straight, railed beautifully. Oh, a bit of trouble there. Uh, Delightful Miss got a check, and here comes Piccadilly Circus. Piccadilly Circus claimed Funster at the 200 and shot away. Quack running on fairly, followed by Lady Melbury on the outside, but Piccadilly Circus four in front, Lady Melbury and Danzig Star, but Piccadilly Circus, this is very easy. Wins it over three lengths to Lady Melbury and Nick Danzig Star. Pearl Reynolds. Thank you.